It's been a decade since the Dead Daisies released their self-titled album. Since then, there's been six studio, one live, and a covers album, and there's anticipation rising for the best of album. I'm joined by guitarist Doug Aldrich, and we're so excited about August 18th when this album drops. How are you? I'm good, Dan. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you guys, and we're very excited. You know, marking 10 years, it's, it's a good reason to celebrate. You can pre-order this album. That date was, what, June 2nd, so you can already pre-order it now. Yeah, pre-order it, and it and it, and it, it comes out, as you said, in August, uh, halfway through August. And it's got basically covers a little bit of every lineup that the Dead Daisies has been involved with, which started with back, uh, 2013 sorry now we're 23 that's 10 years hello good morning <laughs> good morning canada um yes so it, it started off in 2013 david lowey started writing with um some friends and decided hey let's make it a band and let's keep it like friends coming and going and there's been some great lineups and uh i might be the longest member of the dead daisies Let's go back to 2013, because there's a song on that self-titled album, Locked and Loaded, and it features Slash from Guns N' Roses on your first album? That's right, yeah. How did you That's right. How did you manage that? Well, that was before my time, but what they did was, um, they had a singer called John Stevens that was, that was writing with David Lowy, and John Stevens knew Slash, and I think he was in Australia doing some solo work or something and they just got together and wrote this song and slash played on it and that was kind of the one of the the main important pieces to starting the dead daisies so thank you slash it's a it's a great song i mean it's like it's a it's a really fun song to play and uh it's kind of got a deep lyric you know it, it's a war song so it's about you know having having someone go to war and and not come back but it's also got a, a positive message in there. That was the first song, and then it went to um, a lineup with Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses on guitar, and they got John Karabi, uh, and that's when I discovered the Dead Daisies a couple of years later than this when they started. And they, in 2014, they put out an album called Revolution, and there was a cover track on there called Midnight Moses, which is an Alex Harvey band cover from the 70s. And when Dead Daisies came out with it, people thought, oh, that's the new Dead Daisies song. And it started to do really well in the charts and stuff. And that's when I noticed the Dead Daisies. Then a year later, they asked me to join. So I was, and I knew all the guys. I'm friends with them. So it's just been a, a great 10 years for the band. It's been seven years for me. And we've covered a lot of ground in that time. So we wanted to put out this best of for people to get a taste of what had been happening on all six of the studio albums. You said that there has been members like come and go and some have come back. Your lead singer's back. John Karabi is back doing vocals for this tour, right? Yeah, he's back. We're saying he's back for the tour, but I, I would say to you that John Karabi is the quintessential Dead Daisy singer. He's done the most work, the most albums. And I think this lineup with me, him, David Lowy, Michael Devon from White Snake has just joined the band and Brian Tishy from White Snake, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. I'm from White Snake, so it's kind of like you know, Daisy Snake or White <laughs> Daisies right. <laughs> right now. Oh, that's awesome! And you guys have done things with White Snake, like played festivals and with other awesome, super great bands like Kiss and Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, Def Leppard, Bad Company. I could go on and on, but this is big time. Yeah, it's been a really great run. You know, we've been. We've been blessed to have this opportunity to move forward with a few different singers, as you said. But at this point right now, I think this is the lineup. This is like the goalpost has been reached and we've got an, an amazing lineup with John Karabi. There's nobody like John. He's the most greasiest, ass-kicking front man out there right now. And he puts on a great show. And people, that, of course, people know John. They've, they've seen him do uh, acoustic shows. And it's always a great night. If you've seen John doing acoustic shows, come back and see him with the Dead Daisies again. It's going to be amazing. It was a party, you know, big party. Absolutely. Another thing you guys did, you guys played with a 60-piece orchestra in Poland a few years back, a crowd of 300,000 people. What Actually, Dana, you know what? There was even more people than that. It was like, it was, it was almost double that. It was like 500,000. Yeah, it was it was a weird thing. We had we've gone to Poland and 
we had done really well in Poland, headlining a festival that that turned into something really big. And then they decided, hey, what can we do to up the game from the last time we did it? And we decided to do it with the 60-piece Polish orchestra. So we went there and rehearsed with them, and we headlined the weekend. And it was it was insane. Unbelievable. Experience. I can't even picture a venue holding that many people. I, I think the biggest one I've ever been to is about 300,000. It was, uh, it was a, you know, it's a park, a, kind of a, a stadium that spilled into a park. And yeah, it was oh, just wow. during the weekend, I think they said there were 750,000 <laughs> total that had come through. But the Saturday night headline slot, that's where we were, I believe it was Saturday and um, it's Friday or Saturday. And it was just immense. When you have a, a rock band like, you know, Metallica or, or Scorpions or all the bands that have done that with an orchestra, it's just a huge sound when you add an orchestra on top of the band. You know, so with the Dead Daisies, we, we've got a big sound, we've got a, a tight sound, and adding 60 pieces of music musicians around us playing strings and bassoons and French horns and, and percussion. It was incredible. What a, an amazing experience that was. I can't tell you to go in. When we did rehearse with them, it was pretty pretty insane because they had to, to you know transcribe our music so that the musicians could sit there and read the music while and play along with us. It was right. Very cool. Any of that recorded, will we see it on this Best Of album? Unfortunately, it was I don't think we have any of that on the Best of album because it's not any of the live stuff that we've done. But you can see that stuff on YouTube. If you go and you search Woodstock Freedom Festival, the Dead Daisies, you'll see it. Songs like we did, we did a cover of uh, Join Together by The Who. That was one of my highlights of that, you know, because the whole crowd singing along, joined together with us with the orchestra. But on the, on the Best of, we've got a, a little taste of all the studio albums, including the, the recent stuff that we had done with Glenn Hughes. Uh, for those people who are fans and know Glenn Hughes, he's a singer from Deep Purple. So he, we, uh, we've got a few of those songs in there, including two unreleased tracks that we did with Glenn. So those unreleased tracks are going to be on this album? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, the tracks we too, haven't even heard yet. No, they're, they're really cool. They're very deep. Basically, to make a long story short, during the pandemic we had a an album ready to come out called holy ground and we, we we held it off and waited so that we could you know release it and tour it properly and so that started about a year later in 21 when we actually were able to start doing a few shows but during our downtime we wrote we were we were thinking about doing a concept album we wrote a bunch of stuff and we ended up blowing that idea out and just we we released holy ground and then we started working on the next album radiance and these are two songs that, that did not, we recorded them, but they didn't go on the Radiance album, not because they weren't great, but only because they did, it was, would have made it too long. And they, they're, they're deeper in content and, and musically. So it didn't fit with a, a straight ahead kick ass rock record, but they're really great songs. I think you'll really love them. Once, um, just a beautiful ballad with a, you know, let it set you free. It's a beautiful sentiment to let go and move on and, set yourself free and melodically it's it's really beautiful and then this one called the healer is super heavy it's probably the, the heaviest thing we've ever recorded really super dark very cinematic in in the way that it moves you so i think people will enjoy hearing that stuff so will we hear these two songs on your tour starting in august i don't know that's a good question they're definitely there for people to check out and if we got some response that was like hey you gotta play this particular song or that we always listen to that stuff when people come on the, our, our social media and they say we really love this particular song you haven't done it for a while or we've never heard you do it please we actually take that stuff very seriously so we, we would uh have a go at it but the moment we're preparing the set list and i don't know if those, if one of those songs is on it or not but it's been talked about We'll see. The album drops the 18th of August, and then the first show is in Toronto on the 25th. So in between then is when you're going to find out. And you'll probably already yeah. have the set list planned, so you might have to alter it a little bit for us. We always do. We, we change stuff up here and there, but um, we're super stoked to be coming up to Canada. And it's been a while. Obviously, we haven't been able to come up since... 
2018, I think, or 18. It's been a while because, you know, after everything got complicated with pandemic stuff, we couldn't come up. But now we're, we're coming. People have been coming back into Canada, obviously, for a while, and we're finally coming. And like I said, this is the, this is a kick-ass lineup with Michael Devin on bass and, and vocals, John Karabi coming back, and Brian Tishy, I think pound for pound, the greatest drummer playing live right now in rock. And you can quote me on that. And I've heard good things about your guitar skills as well, because you might not give yourself props, but I've heard amazing things. And, well, you can see on... Your music videos, you rock out. And you're not just hitting Thank Canada, you. you're hitting the US, Japan, and Europe in this tour. That's yeah. a big tour. You've got a lot of dates. Are you ready for this? Uh, we're, this is a piece of cake. This is <laughs> like, we're, we, we've toured so hard with John Karabi that, you know, it was like probably not just the amount of shows and days that we worked when last time we worked with John, but it was like we would do a morning show with John, then we would go to the venue and do a sound check, then we would do a meet, not a meet, greet, a uh, pre-show party with various uh, friends of the band. You know, we, we basically make friends with all our fans. And so we would say, okay, if you're first 100 people at the venue, we're going to do a free concert for you. Oh, wow. We truly would do. Yeah, and, and so we're not doing that at this moment in time, but we will eventually get back to that. And, and then we were doing a show and then, a, and then a meet and greet after. So we love it. We love our fans. We love to hang with them. We love to, you know, before the show, if we're not doing a meet and greet or a pre-party, we'll come out and say hi, have a drink, you know, whatever. But uh, we'll definitely have a great time. Can't wait to see you guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time with me. If anybody wants to check out the touring schedule is at www.thedeaddaisies.com. And this has been Doug Aldridge joining me. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, Dana. I really appreciate you what you're doing and appreciate, you know, hopefully we get to see you. Are you going to come out? Yep, we're hoping to, to the Toronto show. That would be great. I'd love to. It's one of the great cities in the world, Toronto. So love to see you there. All right. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.